Okay, uh, welcome back to Violent Money TV. Uh, I'm, of course, today joined by Jack Grant. And Jack, before we get to talk about Brave CF80, where you, of course, are going to be back for the first time in two years, which I, I didn't realise it had been that long. I, um, we'll dive into that. But um, I wanted to go back first before we end up coming to, to Brave um, in, in a couple of weeks. Um, because you won't remember this at all. But... Around uh, the fight that you had with Jai Herbert, I was doing um, written articles for Cage Warriors. So I spoke to you before that. Yeah. So that that is actually the last time I spoke to you, which is crazy how long ago yeah, that crazy, fight yeah. feels at that point. Um, so I wanted to touch on the end of your Cage Warriors run um, and we'll, we'll kind of go from there um, with it because... Um, but your th that was one of the craziest and strangest fights I can remember seeing. Your last fight in Cage Warriors, of course. Ian Machado, Gary is now one of the most talked about guys in the whole game, and it, it definitely felt like people were going to be talking about him um, just from his Cage Warriors run alone. Right? It was like, ah, oh, this guy's destined to be talked about on a on a big scale. But that fight that you had with him was something that I have never seen anything like uh, before <laughs> uh, or since. What was it like for you? Because obviously, a lot of the chaos was regarding his side of things, but it was still quite a bizarre fight to watch play out yeah it was uh it was surreal really um like just a crazy moment really i was just riding the high it was uh it was fun times to be honest um yeah <laughs> it was a good fight i just wanted to uh wanted to land my hands a little bit more but i was having a tough time uh breaching the range um and he had a uh, he had some good takedown defense so I just had to, uh, I had to just like chase him down a little bit. I felt like he was uh, doing a good job of just like sticking the jab and moving, um, and and being frustrating and hard to deal with. But yeah, the, no, it's, it's good one. I just remember the talking. That that was that was one of the main things. Of course, like obviously, without having fans there and stuff, it was like everyone kind of expected that to be a big part. And you know, I think for the most part. You haven't seen that a ton in like the UFC when they have events, when they had the events without any fans, you know, you kind of, you would maybe hear a little bit, but not much. But with you guys, it was like full on conversations at points. It was like completely yeah. like a behind the scenes look for people who uh, have never experienced anything like that. You know, it, it felt very much like watching two guys um, train or, or spar in the gym with each other but just a bit more intensity did it feel like that for you as well because it, it did feel quite like playful at points between you two guys yeah it was just like uh just some frustrations really uh obviously like i said i was struggling to uh close the range um so just like letting out some frustrations um and then like as well it was uh it was different for me as well like it was the first time i'd actually fought somebody that uh, I would speak to previous and and uh, we we got along and it was it was just a uh, yeah it was just different it was weird like but I I enjoyed it though you know what I mean I did enjoy the fight um I felt like I uh, I felt like I pushed him um and yeah you know I I was looking to finish the fight I was just struggling to close that gap it was uh, it was a tough task. So then, obviously, that that's where the Cage Warriors run ends. And then you go on to Bellator, and you have the one fight there. I, I don't know how this works out timeline-wise, but obviously I remember that um, there were a ton of people being signed to Bellator, and then they, their European plans got fully like put on hold, and then people gradually started leaving, and it was like, oh, I guess this is kind of the end of what's happening here. Um, from, from the outside looking in, it just seemed like bad timing, um, for in your scenario, is that how you view it? Because I don't know the ins and outs of how that whole thing with Bellator played out. Um, it was just a one fight deal. Um, I was I was interested in keeping uh, open to other opportunities. Um, yeah, I didn't I didn't want to like rush and sign anywhere because um, some really good shows were getting mentioned, and uh, I, I just didn't want to um, put all my eggs in one basket just off the back of one fight. So wanted to stay open and then uh, it was just for me I just got injured so that was basically what um what slowed me from signing to any one organization um yeah I just needed to recover my body uh, my body just needed rest to be honest so 
what 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 are those those injuries i suppose that kept you out for such a long time because as i said at the start i didn't even realize it had been so long that uh, and i had never noticed that it was only a one fight deal with bellator because that bellator if you had asked me to name when that bellator fight was i couldn't have done it like i, I would have guessed yeah. that it would have been uh, a lot a lot like sooner than it actually was because it doesn't feel that long ago to me but you know you know yeah. is the events Round come every week that's that's the event. Oh, no. That's the t-shirt. So uh, yeah, um, yeah. It was like I say. It was just one of those things. Like um, things were spoken about me signing to Bellator, and there was a lot of interest there. Um, but equally, there was other opportunities um, from other big shows. So didn't want to rush. Um, and then just some injuries. I was suffering with my neck uh, throughout all the all that fight camp. To be honest. Um, that's something that will never go away, but I've definitely like stabilized it and made it stronger. Um, and then I, I uh, play fighting with my uh, younger brother. <laughs> so I'm wrestling on the top of the stairs. We did the full flight of the stairs. I tore my ACL. I did some damage to my PCL, my meniscus, uh, and another part of my knee as well. So, um, yeah, fucking around is what really put me out more than anything, unfortunately. But uh, that's just, <laughs> just the people who know your again. fighting style as well. That makes that yeah. makes that way crazier to imagine because your fighting style is so like explosive <laughs> and creative that that of all things, you know, I would think <laughs> I, I would imagine that of anyone that could handle that kind of thing, it would be you because of the stuff you put yourself through anyway, right? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, I shot a double leg uh, at the top of the stairs, <laughs> and he uh, he got me in an anaconda choke, and it was tight. So I grabbed his bollocks, and then the next thing you know, we're rolling down the stairs, <laughs> and uh, I hit my shin so hard on something. I don't know what, but my shin at something seriously hard, and uh, the next thing you know, uh, I could just kind of like move all my lower shin separated to my knee. Um, yeah, and then after a scan, it turned out I'd done quite a bit of damage. Jeez, well, I mean, <laughs> I can't ever say I've heard of an injury like it. Um, <laughs> it's interesting, I think, that I feel like I've spoken about this so much over the last couple of months, ever since Volkanovski did that press conference after he lost to Islam and he spoke about not being able to fight, right? I think that it's been a bigger talking point than ever before about uh, fighters who... Like at the end of the day, when you've got a fight coming up, you're in the spotlight and everyone wants to know, oh, when's the date? Who's the guy you're fighting? All this stuff. But when when you're not fighting and you're not as active on social media, all this stuff, it, it can be it can be a strange time to be completely out of the spotlight in that way. How has that been coping in that time? Because obviously you had the one fight deal with Bellator and then that happens and then the injury happens. So it's like, it, it really is, even though you wanted to kind of play the field a little bit, it suddenly leaves you with, you know, uh, it is wide open, like. Yeah. Yeah, um, well, in some ways, it was a little bit of a blessing because uh, it's allowed me to rest my neck. Um, I mean, neck's the best it's felt in a while. Um, like, probably like my last sort of two fights before Bellator, I was struggling to even shoot in. I shoot a double leg and I was just getting, like, electric shocks down my arms um, and, and things like that, like. That seems to have uh, really gone away now um, due to strength and conditioning. I've been doing a lot of strength and conditioning and, and really uh, focusing on uh, injury prevention. And uh, I actually feel the best I've ever felt, um, you know, physically. So hopefully uh, that's something that's not going to play me up in, in the moving forward. But um, yeah, like <laughs> shit happens. So you just got to get on with it, haven't you? To, to talk about how we've come around to this this fight on Brave then, Brave CF80, which I, I love the, the fact that this card, I love cards that have a theme. Um, so having a theme to this card, I think is great. But but also when you spoke about uh, some offers from promotions and things like that before and around the Bellator deal, was Brave ever one that came on your radar? And I don't say that to try and make you 
say no to throw them under the bus because I spoke to Shorty Torres about this the other day about how Brave wasn't necessarily on his radar, but they've put the work in over the last couple of years. You know, it could have been it could have been a promotion that has 10 events and you go, oh, that could have been something. But here they are, 80 events in. Like, it's it's pretty crazy to see. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's possible that the, they could have been. Um, it's something you'd probably have to, have to ask uh, my manager. But um, there was a few different shows, uh, you know, like there was some talks with PFL. There was uh, talks with uh, KSW. Um, you know, th- those two were kind of the others, really, that I can remember hearing about. Um, you know, and obviously all just hu- huge shows, like places you want to be. Like, And I also enjoy traveling and fighting, so those opportunities would have given me that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I think that the thing that is so exciting about the fact that people haven't seen you in, in such a long time is that there will be a lot of, of, because the sport grows so fast, there'll be a lot of people that don't know about some of your Cage Warriors fights. And at the time, that division was so exciting. And, you know, it, it really felt like a moment um, for, for for those divisions in Cage Warriors with, you know, the fights between yourself and Jai Herbert, the fight between yourself and Ian as well. Like, um, just such exciting times with so much exciting talent coming through. Um, and like I said, because of the two-year layoff, some people might not even know about uh, some of those fights that you had uh, and also I think the incredibly unique style that you bring that I can't remember seeing anybody like it before in Cage Warriors um, where Thank you. To, to go back to the, the the injury from falling down the stairs it's like I, I've not seen <laughs> I, I don't know what to predict when I'm going to tune into one of your fights and I know that that gets thrown around a lot in MMA but I, I think that, that with your style it's particularly true so I suppose if there are people tuning into this card and they don't know what to expect from you, how would you describe that to somebody? Like if somebody came up to you on the street and was like, what kind of fighter are you? What, how would you describe it? Um, I guess I'm just like a really reactive fighter. Um, but it is one of those as well. Like if they don't see your face, they forget your name. Uh, at the end of the day, I'm back now. I'm healthy. They'll see my face and they'll remember my name. Uh, I'm going to come out, I'm going to put on a show. I believe I'm more experienced than this guy. I, I've got all the all the experience to um, give him huge problems and I, I believe I can stop him. But the thing is for me, it's like I've been around that long. Um, I don't underestimate this game and I'm, I'm going to take him very serious and I just need to be switched on. As, as long as I'm switched on, uh, I do believe you're going to see me... Uh, add another guy to my highlight reel for sure yeah well uh we're all excited to see it mate so uh just just buzzing that this comeback has finally come around for you to see you back in there and stuff uh and, and exciting times with brave as well so appreciate your time mate and uh and all the best all the best for the fight hey no worries man thank you i appreciate the time thank you no worries man enjoy the rest of your day we'll catch you Cheers. later thank you man see you mate. bye-bye